I tell you, you are even cuter than I thought you'd be. Oh, uh, you probably didn't know, but a bunny can call another bunny cute, but when other animals do it, it's a little... <gasps> I am so sorry. Okay, you're not as bad as the clan. <laughs> Good Congratulations. job. Congratulations. <laughs> My name is Jonathan Decker. I'm a licensed therapist and I love cute little fluffy animals. My name's Alan Seawright. I am an unlicensed filmmaker and I love eating meat. All right. Well, we're going to bridge the divide here. We're going to watch Zootopia today, talk about Zootopia and implicit bias. Why Zootopia? Aren't there other more direct, real world, implicit bias films that we could be watching? Well, there's a lot of implicit and explicit bias films that we could be watching. What you gonna do if one of these pictures throws through your head? I'll duck. But you may have noticed we're two white guys. Yeah. So in order to not just have a giant sign flashing white privilege, uh, we figured let's go with foxes and bunnies. Yeah, we're not super qualified to discuss another person's experience. So we're gonna yeah. get a little distance and just explore the principle. So the principle of implicit bias is we all have biases and prejudices that we're not even aware of. Because you can think, well, I'm, you know, I'm woke, right? I'm working sure. through my issues. And you might think you've arrived and be completely blind to all of these underlying subconscious prejudices that creep up in ways that you're not even seeing. So moving forward, we're gonna take a look at Zootopia and explore how we can uncover our implicit biases, bring them to the surface from subconscious to conscious, and then work through them. Hopefully these four scenes are gonna give us kind of the, her whole journey and we can discuss how we can learn and grow. Rock on. 201. Hey, watch where you're going, Fox. <gasps> so this is the first time we meet Nick the Fox, played by Jason Bateman. It's a great role for him. So good. Just snide, cocky, sly fox. See the implicit bias immediately, right? So earlier in the story, Judy has prided herself in not being biased, not being prejudiced against predators or other animals, and yet she sees this fox and she automatically assumes he's a fox, he's up to no good. Yeah. Whoa. Listen, buddy, what? There aren't any fox ice cream joints in your part of town? Uh no, no, there are. There are. It's just you're a part boy, of town. This goofy little stinker. He loves all things elephant. Wants to be. So once again, she's very tuned in that explicit bias is wrong. Oh sure. And so when she hears what she perceives as well, not what perceives what is explicit bias from yeah. the shopkeeper, she stops and she's like, "No, I'm going to stand up for him." Even though minutes before, moments before, she was thinking, "Oh, he's up to no good because he's a fox." And she wasn't even aware that she was thinking it. That's the implicit right. yeah, bias. She, yeah. Excuse me. Can I pay you back? Oh, no. I really love how um, just, the sizes you know, are accurate for all the animals. Yeah. Backward attitudes toward foxes. I just want to say you're a great dad and just a a real articulate fella. Ah, oh, well, that is high praise. It's rare that I find someone so non-patronizing. Officer. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wild. Pause it real quick. Nick <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The real articulate fella, go ahead. It's, it's, it's the perfect encapsulation of implicit bias, right? Right. Because it's a compliment. In this scenario, the reason it's showing implicit bias is the implication is you're articulate but other foxes aren't. Right. You're a credit to your kind. Right. Right. When I was in graduate school in uh, Auburn, Alabama, which is a great place to go to graduate school and to learn about all this stuff because it, the South I love the Auburn, the whole area of Auburn is very striving to be open-minded and striving to be more equitable. More inclusive and, and progressive. Yeah, more, more inclusive and progressive. And um, that's where I first learned about the concept of implicit bias. There's racism, which looks like burning crosses yeah. and wearing hoods and using slurs and excluding people. Well, and this is, this is I think a product of the way we were raised. You, you grew up in Arizona, I grew up in Utah, yeah. but we both grew up in pretty white yeah. areas, yeah. like relatively segregated, with parents who are absolutely not racist at all. But I don't know about you, I was taught- They're not explicitly racist. They're and that's not, not a knock on our no, no, parents. No. Like we all have implicit biases that need to be checked. Well, I look at my parents and then I look at their parents. Yeah. And their parents were explicitly racist mm -hmm. constantly. 
My parents are implicitly racist constantly. You know what? Pretty much all predators and Zootopia is full of them. Oh, still. And foxes are the worst. Yeah, actually, your father does have a point there. <laughs> it's in their biology. And our generation, you know, back to the way we were raised, it's just, I was taught to not see color. Now, you may look around and see two groups here. White collar, blue collar. But I don't see it that way. And you know why not? Because I am collar blind. Right. Which is and that's the how absence you fight, of and that's racism. And that's how you fight racism, right? right is right, the right. whole idea. But that's the absence of racism. It's not the presence of finding ways to rid yourself of implicit bias. Because if you, if you say you don't see color, you rid yourself of explicit bias and you say, oh, we're all the same and right. we're all brothers and sisters and we should treat each other well. And that's actually a beautiful idea. Sure. But it's not based in reality. No. Because the fact is, race is a thing. Ethnicity is a thing. Sexuality is a thing. All of our differences, um, because if you, if you say we're all the same, what you're saying is actually, I'm denying your heritage. Your heritage, my heritage doesn't matter. Well, and the fact that you grew up a fox in a bunny's world, you know, to use that metaphor. Yeah. I'm denying that things may have been different for you growing up. And like Judy Hopps here sees herself as a very enlightened mm -hmm. bunny. Remember what happened with Gideon Gray? When I was nine, Gideon Gray was a jerk who happened to be a fox. I know plenty of bunnies who are jerks. Uh, the problem with implicit bias is we think, okay, I don't look like that, I don't act like that, therefore I'm good. Right, yeah. It's benign in intent and so damaging so insidious because it seems like it's not a problem. If it's overt, like if you said the N-word, I could say you're a jerk and yeah. you need to check yourself because that is flat out wrong. Whereas if you did something like this. A real articulate fella. It's so hard to convince you that you've done anything wrong. I was being nice. I said he was articulate. Exactly. Yeah. My intentions are good, therefore my behavior is good. Right. And one thing I know, just taking a step back from implicit bias and race and everything, but just human behavior and interaction, is there's intention and there's result. Sure. And the big thing with implicit bias is I can't say my intentions are good, therefore no harm, no foul. And that's the biggest thing that I see with people who don't believe that we still have a race problem we don't believe we still have prejudice problems. Is like, well, my intentions are good, and my friends aren't burning crosses, and look, we've got a black guy in our group, so like, we're, we're totally, good, right? yeah, we're totally open-minded. And it's like, well, okay, you're not as bad as the Klan. Good <laughs> Congratulations. job. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you're not committing hate crimes. <laughs> Yay. But, but we need to be aware of what's <clears throat> underneath. <clears throat> I'm so nervous. Okay, press conference 101. You so, and I love this scene. She's spent enough time with Nick now to have essentially rid herself of implicit bias as relates to him specifically. Yeah. Look how small she is. I know. I love it. So often the animals are roughly the same size, but here they're all. What can you tell us about the animals that went savage? Well, the, the, an, the animals in question. Um, okay, so what is the connection? Oh, all we know is that they are all members of the predator family. So predators are the only ones going savage? That is accurate, yes, that is accurate, yes. Why, why is this happening? We still don't know. So we found a group. Yep. It may have something to do with biology. What do you mean by that? In their this DNA, is you know, taking something that she overheard that may or may not be accurate. Yeah. And using that as a justification for, again, not explicit bias. Aggressive hunting And she's trying to word it carefully and not give offense and... You know, again, not racist, but not, not, you know, rid of implicit bias. And we at the ZPD are prepared and are here to protect We're you. More the thing about prejudice and bias is I don't think we're born with it. No. It, you, 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 see, you see little kids of different colors and it's like, oh, hey, you're dark, I'm light. Ha <laughs> ha. And then they play. Cool. And then it's, it's not, not an issue. It's not even a thing. And the thing is uh, about prejudice is it's a million different stimuli. It's a million different messages that were fed explicitly implicitly day in day out until layer upon layer upon layer is built. So even if you're raised in a progressive family 
or even if you're raised, you know, as we were by parents who teach, you know, everyone of every skin color is... Underneath, we're all the same. Yeah, underneath, we're all the same and, and all this stuff. You still get the messaging. Yep. And then to undo it also takes layer by layer by layer. It's a thing that has just been programmed into you by growing up in our society, right? Yeah, yeah. And the only way to get at it is to constantly think. You can't just coast through life relaxed anymore. You can't assume you've arrived. Because what's Judy Hopps? She's like at this place of she thinks enlightenment. Like, I'm friends with a fox, and I know he's a good person, and I'll go so far as to say I want him as my partner. And the thing is, like, it's not, it's not hypocrisy. Like, she's very genuine no, yeah, with it. she is. But when she gets up at the press conference, she still falls back on these, well, predators. Okay, predators can be good, but they still have this dark side to them. They've still got this side to them that we need to keep in check. The rest of us need to look out for. And you could see on his face, it's like, oh, man. Well, we're going to see more of it right now. Okay. Oh, that went so fast. I didn't get a chance to mention you or say anything about how we... Oh, I think you said plenty. What do you mean? Clearly, there's a biological component. These predators may be reverting back to their primitive, savage ways. Are you serious? Nick, stop it. You're not like them. Oh, there's a them now. Uh, you know what I mean. You're not that kind of predator. The kind that needs to be muscled? The kind that makes you think you need to carry around fox repellent? Yeah, don't think I didn't notice that little item the first time we met. Just when I thought somebody actually believed in me, huh? Probably best if you don't have a predator as a partner. Mm. Uh, no. oh, Nick! Nick! Officer Hawk, were you just threatened by that predator? No, he's my friend. We can't even trust she, our own She's friends. trying. That we can't trust our own friends. Please. Are we safe? Have any other foxes gone fast? What are you thinking, man? You know, going back through my life history, like how many times have I said something or done something that, you know, unintentionally may have yeah. caused pain or, or hurt somebody like that. And it's, it's sobering to think about, because I guarantee that I have said and done things. Yeah. The, the saddest part about that statement for me, because I'm the same way, is that not everybody is going to act like Nick does, where he calls her out on it. Right. Because a lot of people, they are punished for standing up. It could be violence against them. It could be legal action against them. It could also just be social punishment. The point is, like, I, I look back at my life, what things have I said or done, and because my friend of color or my friend who's gay or my friend who's this or that laughed about it, I thought, oh, well, see. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Right? So at this point in the film, she has just realized that the cause of the predators going savage is a uh, plant extract that'll make anybody go savage, right? It'll make a bunny go savage. But I don't like the little ones going near them on account of what happened to your Uncle Terry. Yeah, Terry ate one hole when we were kids and went completely nuts. He bit the dickens out of your mother. But it's being purposely administered to predatory animals. To cause a race riot, essentially. Yeah, essentially, so that they look bad. Yeah, but it's, so, so she now has some information that has changed her outlook on Nick? on predators versus prey. Nick? Oh, Nick. Night howlers aren't wolves. They're toxic flowers. I think someone is targeting predators on purpose and making them go savage. Not leading with an apology. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Wait, uh, wait, please. I, I know you'll never forgive me, and I don't blame you. I wouldn't forgive me either. Getting warmer. Was ignorant and irresponsible and small minded. But predators shouldn't suffer because of my mistakes. I have to fix this. So, as a therapist, I can't do it without you. how important is apology and how good of an apology is that? Because to me, that feels like a really effective. And, that, and that'll be fine because I was a horrible friend. And I hurt you, and you, and you can walk away knowing that you were right. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying this. <laughs> I really am just a dumb bunny. It's a great performance, great writing. <laughs> I really am just a dumb bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Just a dumb bunny. 
Oh, okay. Oh, you bunnies. You're so emotional. There you go. Deep breath. Are you, are you just trying to steal the pen? Is that what this is? <laughs> so to, to answer your question, um, the mark of a real apology is that it's less about... He's crying again. I love this man. Freaking... I love I this can't... man. <laughs> I'm not mocking you. I just think it's... <sighs> I'm laughing because when my kids do something that endears them to me, I just have to laugh out of sheer joy. And I'm loving the fact that we can't get through a single one I of these episodes <laughs> without I you don't, crying. <laughs> I don't think I cried during the thing. No, you didn't cry I during didn't the cry thing. didn't cry during the thing. Okay, so... Progress. A, a true apology is not about getting a certain reaction from the other person. Right. I love when she says, you can continue to hate me and I'll deserve it. Because a true apology is really just about acknowledging and taking accountability for one's mistakes. Like, if the relationship is repaired, it's icing on the cake. But what it really is, is I hurt you. I can't undo that, but I can't acknowledge that I'm the one that hurt you. Sure. And I made it seem like it was you, and I tried to act like it was you, but it wasn't. Now, the thing about Nick here, like most people, in the face of a truly broken heart, not one of these, like, half apologies where you start to apologize and then take a hard left into blame. I'm sorry I offended you. I'm, I'm sorry you felt that way. Right. Right? Yeah. Most people in the face of that will do exactly what he did. At our core, we want connection. We want relationships. And this is how real growth happens. Because one of the things about, you see Nick early on, he is playing the part. He is, sure. He's adhering to the stereotypes. I mean, foxes are sly and crafty and manipulative and deceitful. And he is all those things. But he says, If the world's only going to see a fox as shifty and untrustworthy, there's no point in trying to be anything else. And so many times, people are taught, this is the only way you can be. This is the only way that people, this is how people see you anyways. Yeah, so just accept your stereotype and be the best version of that or the whatever version of that. Right. Yeah. When we treat people according to their potential, when we treat them with the respect that they deserve, it's amazing how many people walk up to that. Yeah. Because it's what they've always wanted. Well, the golden rule works, man. Treat people how you would like to be treated. Yeah. By anyone in any situation. Yeah. No matter whether they're a fox or a bunny. Nick, you are so much more than that. And so when she starts to see Early on, she starts to treat him as someone who can be trusted. It's who he always wanted to be anyways. Yeah, he adapts to it really quickly. And then, you know, she betrays that unintentionally through implicit bias. But once she really steps into it and takes full ownership, he comes all the way to where he... I mean, th what's beautiful about Nick's arc in this is this who he is right here is who he always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not that she gave that to him, because if we look at modern parallels like... That's just like a white That's savior a white thing, savior right? complex, yeah. And so it's not, it's not, in this case, it's not a race thing. It's a human thing. Most people want to be good. I and mean, what I, what people call white privilege, I often think of it as majority privilege. It's majority privilege. And the form it takes here is majority white, right? So there is, there is explicit, harsh, mean, nasty, cross-burning bias. And then there's implicit bias, which means, well, we look after our own without even thinking to look after the other person. And the majority is gonna look after the majority, just like all these, these herbivores here are gonna say, well, what do we need to do to protect ourselves, take care of ourselves, look out for ourselves? Meanwhile, a peace rally organized by pop star Gazelle was marred by protest. Go back to the forest, predator! I'm from the savannah! And they're not even thinking about these poor predators. And that's, and that's what Judy, that's what she realizes. She says, but predators shouldn't suffer because of my mistakes. And so when we talk about this deep-seated, implicit bias, institutionalized racism, it takes so many forms. And what we're talking about today is good people who are trying to be egalitarian, who are trying to be fair-minded, who are trying to love their neighbor, and being in tune with, there's still more work to do, there's more layers to go through. When I was a kid, I thought Zootopia was this perfect place where everyone got along and anyone could be anything. Turns out... When I was a kid, I thought America was this perfect place. 
Real life is messy. We all have limitations. We all make mistakes, which means, hey, glass half full, we all have a lot in common. So no matter what type of animal you are, from the biggest elephant to our first fox. <laughs> With the aviators. I implore you, try. Try to make the world a better place. Look inside yourself and recognize that change starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with all of us. So you brought up a couple of times that you love the size difference between yeah. the characters. I mean, part of it is just, you know, you get to do fun things like having Judy Hopps chasing that weasel through Tiny Town where uh -huh. everything is miniature, right. <laughs> which is great. And the, the insane public transit system that can accommodate giraffes and voles and, you know, yeah, everything, and in everything between, between yeah. which is super fun. But one of the things that I love about it is because the characters aren't human in this, if they were all the same size, it would be really, really easy as a human to just look at them and go, oh, they're all the same, they're all just animals. But here you see the disparity. But here you see the disparity, and it's, it's a very obvious visual representation of, hey, we got differences here. You know, actually, when she talks about, I dreamed of a world where any, every, anyone could be anything, and Zootopia was this place where everyone could get along, and you see these two different species, animals playing together, and they're the same size, which is not gonna last. That feeds into thematically, the world is actually more complex. And if we're going to give each other a seat at the table, we first have to recognize that there are people who aren't at the table. Right. And like stop buying into the myth that they're happy to not be at the table. You know, particularly in America, we have this very egalitarian view of what America is. It's a meritocracy, right? The yeah. people who are the best get ahead and everyone who doesn't, right, land it's of kind of their fault. Right, yeah. And that's frankly just untrue. Yeah. It's a great myth to found a country So, so if, I can, if I can tweak it slightly sure. from, from myth to ideal, much right? Much better, much better. So this, this is what we should be, right? This, yeah. is, this is what we should strive towards. Yeah, I guess the myth is believing that we've achieved the ideal. America, what America represents, is beautiful, it's inspired, it's incredible. But what all of us, it behooves all of us to do as Americans, and frankly, as anyone who loves- Citizens of planet Earth. Citizens of planet humans, Earth. Right? Any, anyone who loves the idea of freedom, who loves the idea of opportunity, who loves the idea of brotherhood and sisterhood, is to strive towards what Judy Hopp ends up striving towards in Zootopia. Zootopia is a unique place. It's a crazy, beautiful, diverse city where we celebrate our differences. This is not the Zootopia I know. Zootopia is not a utopia. America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave, but it can be. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is the most powerful part of this film, and that is the message for all of us, is that we can help each other get there. And you can help us get there by liking, subscribing, and clicking the bell. <laughs> That was, just, it was so crass, it just felt <laughs> inevitable. Anyway, follow us on social media, at therapy underscore cinema on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Look for us on Facebook. Look for us on Facebook. If you'd like to rent or buy Zootopia, we have a link in the description to do so. We get a little percentage of that, which helps us to produce these videos. If you'd like some extra counsel or support, I offer a free 15-minute consultation. Link is there in the bio as well. And once again, as we've been talking about, we're just two white guys who don't know what it's like to be anything else but at the literal top of the societal food chain. Yeah. And so we are doing our best here, but we recognize that we may have blind spots. So please, in the comments, you know, let her rip. Let us know what yeah. we could have done differently. I'd say keep it respectful, but you don't need to respect me. I don't deserve it. <laughs> Until next time, eat that delicious meat. Meet some furries. And, and watch movies. movies. Can we please uh, just focus on the Hey. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Priscilla. Oh, no. Yes. Flash. What <gasps> do no. you call? A three-humped camel. Oh. Pregnant. Okay, great. Three you got it. Please. Pumped. Just... Ah!